During my freshman and sophomore years of college, I was extremely awkward. I had just come out as gay, I didn't have any friends, and I was just generally kind of a big wad of social anxiety. Given that I didn't even have the social skills to make a few friends, it's not surprising that I also had literally no dating experience. Miraculously, over the course of the summer after sophomore year, I just sort of grew out of the worst of my awkwardness. I lost some weight, had a lot more confidence in myself, and my self-esteem was a lot higher. I came back to school in August, and by October, I had a decent number of genuine friends and had gotten a lot more involved on campus. With my newfound confidence, I decided I'd finally download Grindr and see what it was like. For anyone who doesn't know, Grindr is a gay dating app that is primarily used for finding sex and hookups. Despite my recent improvement in the social arena, I was still extremely naive and inexperienced when it came to dating and sex. I set up my Grindr profile with a nice picture of myself and a very brief bio, and I got a lot of messages very quickly after my picture got approved. One guy who messaged me had a display name of dad 4 young which should have been my first red flag, but I was oblivious. I should note that I look really young for my age. At the time, I was 21, but I was regularly asked by campus staff which middle or high school I was visiting from. I'm 23 now, and I still get asked if I want a kid's menu if I go to a restaurant with my parents. It's bad. So, dad for young sends me a message that just says, what's up? And I reply without looking at his profile first. I then look at his profile and noticed he's 54. His only profile text says, the younger the better. And his only picture was a zoomed in blurry picture of a hairy chest, so I was very much not interested. But given my inexperience, I thought ignoring him would be horribly rude, so I kept responding. I don't totally remember what we talked about in the maybe 10 or so messages we exchanged at first, but I do remember him saying I was, quote, very cute. I know I told him I was a student, but I never mentioned which college I went to. It's important to note that I went to college in a major city, and there's a bunch of different colleges, all within like 5 miles of each other, and a few more within 10 miles of those. Sort of like Tinder, Grinder works based off your location, but much more precisely. If you're less than a mile or two away from someone who is online, it will display the distance in feet. I noticed that Dad for Young's profile said he was 25 miles away, which I thought was kind of far. Dad for Young started getting more sexual in his chats and asked if I wanted to meet up. I felt bad flat out denying him since he had been polite so I told him I didn't want to meet up with him that day, but that we could keep chatting if he wanted. I figured that was that, and when I checked 20 minutes later, it said he was offline. Nope. About 30 minutes after that, I get another message from him. Hey, I got wild hair and thought I'd take a nice drive out to, insert my college, smiley face. I had not told him the name of my college, nor had I told him what part of town I was in. I looked at his profile, and it now said he was three miles away. I started freaking out a little and didn't reply to his messages in hopes that he'd just leave me alone. It's important to note that my college has a couple of different campus chunks, separated by a few miles. I lived on the upperclassman residential campus, which was about two miles from the main campus, where all of the other student dorms and main buildings are. I felt like if he was going to try to find me, he'd go to the main campus first, then maybe give up, since not many outside people know about the separate residential campus. Five or six minutes later, I get another message that says something like, No fun if you don't play along. What building on the residential campus are you in? His profile now says he's a little over two and a half thousand feet away, and every time I reopen his profile, the distance would decrease. I was fully losing it at this point, since the guy had the ability to pinpoint my location. So I shut my blinds, 
turned off my light and locked my window, the door to the apartment, and my bedroom door. My roommate was also out of town on some kind of retreat, so it was just me. He kept sending me messages every minute or so, saying things like, gonna find you, and here I come, smiley face, and other supremely creepy stuff like that. The distance was down to 310 feet, and I was completely losing my mind and didn't know what to do, so I just deleted my whole profile. Nothing else happened that night, though I was absolutely terrified he was going to come knocking on my door. Fast forward to three days later, I decided to re-download Grindr after doing more research into seeing that I can just adjust my settings so that my exact location is not visible. When I logged on the first time with my remade profile, I adjusted some of the search filters until the results were specific enough to display dad 4 youngs profile, which I promptly blocked. Later that evening, I get a message from someone with the display name, We'll Find You, with the same gross profile picture as dad 4 young and my stomach sinks. He sent a flurry of messages. You f***ed up almost got police called on me because of you. Couldn't find you so I had to go to the other dorms and find someone else. Said I was outside his dorm and told me to leave and he'd call the cops. I'm coming for that sweet virgin asshole. Freaked out, I blocked him again, deleted my profile again, then deleted Grinder. I refused to re-download it or any dating apps for about a year after that, at which point I worked up the courage to try again and have not heard from this nut job since, thank God. So, terrifying old man with a fetish for young, inexperienced guys, please, let's not ever meet. So, a bit of backstory, I'm an 18-year-old female from the UK. This happened in February 2019. I was 16 at the time. I had got set up on a semi-blind date by a mutual friend. We had seen photos of each other. And this guy, we'll call Cameron, he was 19. Cameron seemed like your average guy. Maybe a little into video games and anime and stuff. But overall, nothing my friend told me about him seemed off in any way. Our mutual friend gave us each other's numbers and we texted for a night and decided to meet in a Starbucks the next day, since we were both free. I never liked to meet new people this soon, but I figured since Cameron knew my friend, it couldn't possibly go wrong. How mistaken I was. I arrived slightly early, ordered my coffee since I never like guys to feel they have to buy for me, and parked up on a seat facing away from the door and pulled out my book. I'm there maybe 15 minutes chilling out and I get a text saying he's here. So I'm like, great, I'm at X table. I feel a presence over my shoulder and I turn my head slightly in acknowledgement. He must be there. Before I even get a chance to squeak out a hello, his lips latch onto my neck and he starts sucking on my neck. Now, I don't like people touching my neck at the best of times. I'm very ticklish and I get super uncomfortable by people even touching my neck. A few times I've had massages or hair treatments, I've been holding in my discomfort, and he's latched on my neck like a leech. And this man smells horrendous, kind of like dust personified. I freak out and elbow his chest to get him the hell off me. He lets go and looks at me with this weird expression on his face and laughs in deadpan. It's really, really creepy, and I start to become alarmed. I ask him what the hell that was, and he just says, I thought it was cute. Cute? In what world? I try to have a conversation. I'm like, okay, first impressions don't mean anything. Let's try to give him a chance. But he's just creepily staring at my chest. He says, wow, I didn't know Asians could have boobs like those. I better not let you go direct quote. I cannot make this stuff up. I'm distinctly uncomfortable, but don't want to just run away. He's giving me really weird vibes. 
So I go into the ladies' bathroom and wait for someone else to come in. I ask her to help me get out undetected. I don't want this man following me home or something. She of course agrees and she lends me her hat and scarf. It's February in the UK after all. But we come out of the bathroom together and she manages to help sneak me out of the back door of the Starbucks without him noticing me. He asked my friend where I went, but I told my friend to never mention me again. I was too terrified. I know I probably didn't behave well. I should have just told him I was leaving, but I was honestly scared. Dear guy who decided it was appropriate to suck my neck before we had even said hello, let's not meet again. When I was in high school, I had a punk friend I used to run into at shows a lot, and he was often with this really cute skinny guy with long hair named Billy. I always thought Billy was hot. Fast forward about two years after high school, I found out Billy and I were attending the same college. He asked me online if I'd want to meet up with him between classes, and I said yes. I didn't recognize him at first, and apparently walked right past him, Eventually, he texted me and figured out where I was so we could go and hang out in his car. I was incredibly disappointed. He looked nothing like he used to. He had gained a lot of weight and cut his hair much shorter. I distinctly remember he was wearing ugly red pants that didn't fit his body well at all. They looked handmade in a bad way. He also kept talking about the fact that he had a Prince Albert, which I didn't care about. When he asked me out on a date, I said sure, what's the harm in it? It was rare for anyone to ask me out on a proper date. He picked me up from my parents' house the next night and we went to the nearby theater about seven minutes away. Unfortunately, once we got there, they wanted to see my ID for the movie and I didn't have it on me, so we had to go back. He acted really annoyed and inconvenienced that I had left my ID at home even though it wasn't a far drive and we were pretty early. Anyway, we get back to the theater and see Strange Wilderness. This movie had been in theaters for a few weeks at this point, so the theater itself was near empty. It was just another couple and an older dude by himself. Throughout the entire movie, Billy laughed at pretty much every single joke. Well, I wouldn't call it laughing, Really, it was more of a loud, high-pitched giggle. At first, I thought it was fake, but he kept giggling like that. It was really off-putting. After a short while, it became obvious that the other three people in the theater were no longer laughing at the movie's jokes, but at Billy's laugh. It was that ridiculous. As the movie wore on, I got more and more embarrassed. I remember thinking to myself, I'm never seeing a movie with this guy again. When we left the theater, he immediately turned to me and exclaimed, Wow, that movie was awful. I didn't like it at all. What the hell? Then why was he giggling consistently for the entire thing? I was super confused. When it came time for him to drop me off, he stalled in the driveway and asked me to make out with him. I told him no, absolutely not because my dad was weird and would definitely be watching us from his office window. He completely ignored my request, put the car in park, and started playing music. What did he put on? Barry White. I couldn't believe it. So I awkwardly made out with him to Barry White in his dirty car in front of my parents' house. I felt the same embarrassment I'd felt when we were in the theater. It took everything in me not to burst out laughing. I have to assume somebody told him to put that music on for girls as a joke, but he took it seriously. For the record, he was also a terrible kisser. We hung out maybe twice after that, but never made out again or anything. I remember at one point we were in a cafe, and he accidentally showed me pictures of himself to show off the Prince Albert. He said, Oh my god, I'm sorry about that. And I cluelessly replied, Oh, don't worry. It was so fast I didn't see anything. I never saw or heard from him again after that year. I haven't been able to search him online. 
but I'm sure he'd be just as unrecognizable and uninteresting as before. I had been sent to Korea from my university a few years ago. They told me for my major I had to go somewhere in Asia and my friend had already talked up Korea for me. I knew nothing about it but I decided what the hell and I embarked on a semester long trip. I only had one serious boyfriend in my life who I had broken up with a few months prior. I also don't enjoy one night stands and wasn't digging the dudes in the clubs in Seoul but I still wanted to have some sort of romantic experience I suppose, so my friend recommended I use this dating app to meet English-speaking Koreans. That way I could meet someone and experience the actual dating culture. I thought, I'm young, so why not? I was just so eager to have new experiences. Maybe it sounds dumb to try dating in a foreign country, but it worked out for me, eventually. Just not the first date. I met him on a dating app after being in Seoul about three weeks. Let's call him Tim. I still didn't know the culture or city very well and was a bit naive about everything. He eagerly wanted to meet for a date after talking to me and he seemed nice. I should have asked more questions and I should have noticed that he was not giving me many details about himself. Tim was a guy a bit older than me but claimed he was a college student. I assumed he had done his military time, all men in Korea have to, and returned to school. We talked for a bit and decided to meet for a tea date near the school I went to. He wanted to come to my dorm originally to pick me up, but I live in an all-woman's dorm and I didn't want him to know exactly where I lived since we were still strangers, so instead I insisted we meet at the main town center near the subway. He really didn't like this idea which looking back was a red flag, but eventually I insisted. The night of the first date, I waited an hour for this guy. He was very late. Tim weirdly claimed he just wanted to make me wait. I thought he was kidding and messaged him with a laughing emoji, assuming he was just lost. When he finally arrived, he was much smaller than I thought, but a man's height has never been something I care about much. He was also quite thin, Maybe I let my guard down because I didn't see him as physically threatening to me, which was a mistake in the end. Right off the bat, he was way too touchy with me and breathed creepy and heavy. I was so put off with his demeanor. I'm usually very tolerant with different personality types, but this was very odd to me. I had been told that Korean men would be polite and not so touchy on the first date, he was also dressed oddly for a date, like in business attire, but I thought that maybe it's just a Korean thing. Again, I was dumb and knew nothing about the culture. Then, the first thing he said to me was, you're not as white as I thought you were. I thought this was a translation error, but his English was near perfect. So I asked for clarification, and he said what he meant. I thought you would be more white, your skin is darker than I thought and your eyes aren't as green. Are you pure European? Now, I was officially weirded out. First of all, I'm pretty much as white as you can get. I'm Irish and Scandinavian, so white as hell, basically. So the fact he thought I could have possibly been anything whiter was funny. And why did he care in the first place anyway? Why does my skin color matter to this guy? And why is he bringing it up? He said about three times on the date how he wished I had greener eyes, and every time I would just reply, well, maybe my online photos make me look brighter, and brushed it off as him being nervous and trying to start a conversation. Isn't it funny the dumb excuses you make for people when you're panicked? When we arrived at the tea place, I tried to order a basic raspberry tea, and he stopped me and told me I had to have this special tea. I thought it was weird he wanted to choose my tea for me, but in my head I brushed it off once again. He really insisted I drink only this tea type and I just agreed. These small details become weirder later. After tea, he asked if we could look around my school. It was dark, but the school is very well lit, so I agreed. And the whole time we walked around, he would randomly stop and grab me for long hugs. At first, I let it happen, but then I stopped him 
and he just kept trying. He kept grabbing me and breathing hard into my neck. It was so awkward. He also would not tell me any personal details about himself. I asked so many questions, desperately trying to distract from all of the awkward grabbing and to try and get to know him, but he would never tell me anything. He even said at one point, I'm a mysterious man, like a movie line. He also said something like, you look so much like my favorite movie character, and I asked who, but he said that I would have to figure it out on my own. Finally, he said, I want to go to a dark area, and in my head I screamed, hell no. At this point, I wanted the date over fast. He somehow knew there was a wooded area behind my campus, and he said we should go there. I said no, and that I wanted to stay near the main campus and town, but he kept pushing. Finally, he grabbed my arm and started dragging me there. He said, I can't let anyone see, and I started to panic. I finally ripped my arm away and just demanded we leave to go back to the main road immediately. Looking back, I don't know why I didn't ask for help or get angry. Maybe I was scared, but I just began to book it to the main road, and he followed. We ended up in front of a hospital near the center of town, and I told him it was time for him to go. I made some excuse and he was pleading with me to stay. I told him we could meet the next day, I lied, and that I would message him. I just wanted to get away at this point. I was pretending it was all okay, just so he would leave. Suddenly, I think he's leaning in to kiss me, and I immediately think, oh god no. But it was so much worse. Instead, I feel pain in my face. It takes me a second to realize, he was biting my face. It was like a dog. I had never felt the sensation before. He leaned his head sideways and bit me on my nose and cheek, as hard as he could. I screamed and pushed him away from me. His face looked so freaky, and I barely had time to react in words. Instead, I ran up the sidewalk until I saw a convenience store on the right. I ran to the back of the store and bent down and started to cry. The man who owned the store started to yell at me, but I couldn't explain my situation. I just begged him in English to let me stay. I ended up having to buy a popsicle to stick around. God, I wish I had learned some Korean by then. I guess Tim didn't follow me. I peered outside the store and didn't see him. I texted a friend and waited for them to get me to take me back to my dorm. On the way, I messaged Tim and basically told him to stay away from me. I told him he was a creep and that he shouldn't bite women and something along the lines of me calling the police and then I blocked him. I was so scared to walk around my school after that, I was afraid he would find me somehow. I'm so thankful I never let him pick me up at my dorm. I called my mum to tell her what had happened when suddenly she said, wait, what did he ask you? She then put some details together and realized that all of these weird things had to do with 50 shades of grey books. At first, I thought she was being silly and overthinking a bad date. I thought she was joking, but oh god, she was right. She had recently seen the movie or read the book or something and knew the details. The eye color, the way he dressed, and the tea he made me drink, and the random lines he said. It all matched the books and movie for his dirty little fantasy. My mum thinks he picked me because I looked like the girl in the movie to him. It explains why he was so fixated on my appearance and his whole thing with the biting and trying to dominate me. Even if it wasn't his intention, I later learned that there are a few creeps who seek out foreign girls to dominate and have sex with as like a prize. They call it riding the white horse or something along those lines. On a happier note, this bad experience didn't stop me. I eventually met someone else in Korea and we ended up falling in love. We even did the whole long distance thing and now I'm living in Korea, studying and working, hoping to marry soon. So I guess I didn't let bad creep guys stop my life. As for Tim, let's not meet. It's been years, but I will still kick your ass if I see you, and I won't have to bite.
I'm 28 now, but a first online date with an older stranger still replays in my brain years later. This isn't a traumatic story, and I know it could be a lot worse. I had just moved to San Francisco for college and started talking to this guy on Tinder who was in his late 30s, early 40s, Asian and not particularly good looking. I had not had much luck with old previously, so I decided to be more open-minded and go out with someone who was not my traditional type, but that is neither here nor there. We got cocktails and on the date, I acted as pleasant and engaged as I could. Even though there was not much chemistry, I still felt I should be respectful, and I got the feeling he was doing the same. After one drink, we decided to part ways, and he offered me a ride home. The juicy part. Once I got home, I received a message that was paragraphs and pages long from him, the longest message I've probably ever received, saying, one, he really wanted to leave the whole time, but stayed and paid for my one drink and gave me a ride, and highlighted that it was because he was a nice guy. Two, I was overweight and was not attractive. Three, I had acne and it was disgusting. Four, the school I went to was not even a good school, and he went to a college rated much higher, so I should stop talking so highly of myself, and probably other mean things. My heart sank after this unprompted and completely unnecessary message, and I immediately deleted it and blocked him, but the words still replayed in my head of every insecurity I have. I sought therapy for it, which helped, but even now, I still think about it, and when I date online, I obscure my face and take unflattering angles. I'm very guarded, never put my best foot forward. It makes me sad that I dimmed my light because some guy decided to be a bully for some arbitrary reason. I'm wary of nice guys, and as bad as this sounds, Asian guys, but by the way, I'm Asian too, but not because I think poorly of them but I subconsciously feel like they all would think I'm as disgusting as this guy did, even if they don't say anything to my face, that people are thinking all those things. This still affects me seven years later. I matched on Tinder with this guy. We both shared a love for the same TV show, and began our conversation quoting it back and forth. From his pictures, he looked relatively attractive, so when he asked me to go for a drink, I accepted. I met him at a bar. He was waiting outside for me as COVID rules dictated, waiting to be seated, etc. My instant impression was, oh no, this isn't for me. He didn't look entirely like his photos, and the way he greeted me was much like an adult would greet a toddler. However, I continued with the first date, as first impressions aren't always everything. The date was generally pretty awful. It was awkward and full of uncomfortable silences, which racked my brain to fill. We disagreed on quite a few topics, and it became clear we didn't really have anything in common at all. His sense of humor was also very strange. We weren't compatible on that either. We got onto the subject of age, and when he asked my birthday, he started shouting about how crazy it was, and everyone was looking at us. I figured he was going to say he had the same birthday, but he didn't. It was the following day, and he was shouting saying, what are the chances? To which I responded, uh, about 1 in 365? Thankfully, there was a 10pm curfew on pubs, and I used the excuse of booking a taxi before then as it would be super busy around 10. We said our goodbyes, and I felt a wave of relief come over me, as the whole evening had been very forced and awkward. Towards the end of the evening, I had the impression that he wasn't feeling anything either, and was relieved when he didn't message me after we had left the pub. I decided I would message him the next day politely telling him that I didn't feel like we were a good match, but it was nice to meet him, I woke up the next day to a message from him saying exactly what I had planned to say to him. Woohoo, I didn't have to feel bad rejecting him. I explained I felt the same way and said it was nice meeting him. End of, right? Oh no. 
He messaged me the next day, asking why I didn't like him. I thought, dude, what the hell? You didn't like me either. I politely explained he wasn't my type and we didn't have much in common, which he agreed with. However, a further couple of days later, he decided to ask if I would be up for casual sex. I mean, shoot your shot, I guess. I said sorry, but no, as he wasn't my type. He then responded, what, not even for sex? I replied saying no again and advised he drop the issue. I'd already said no once and had remained polite the whole time. His reply, all right, whatever, F rejection, I'll move on. I didn't allow him to get any further than that and swiftly blocked him on the messaging service and removed him as a match on Tinder. Safe to say I deleted Tinder not long after that. The UK went back into lockdown anyway, so I've not missed out on much. This story kind of creeped me out. It happened about nine years ago and sometimes comes into my mind. It really creeps me out. So I was on an adult dating site, one of the fetish types. I know, don't judge me. I was looking for some fun. Anyway, I was stupid and gave out more information than I should have. I was chatting with a guy. He had asked me at some point what I did for work. At the time, I was working at McDonald's, so I told him. He asked which one. I stupidly told him which one. We chatted off and on. We hadn't been chatting for too long. I also stupidly gave him my phone number at some point. He would talk about how he wanted to meet me on my break and have some fun. I told him no thanks, I don't bring my lifestyle to my job. Anyway, so I checked my messages just before I was due to clock out of work. It was lucky that I did. He mentioned that he was at my job and told me what he ordered. I think it was a Big Mac meal. I was like, um, okay. Well, don't expect me to do anything with you. I'm not interested. He then got upset and wasn't accepting that I wasn't interested. I was also scared because I had sent him a face picture of myself, but I had never received one from him. I really wasn't too interested in him, so I decided I didn't need a face picture since I wasn't going to meet up with him. His interests weren't what I was looking for, and I have a hard time straight up saying not interested and just slowly start to ghost whoever I had no interest in. Now, luckily... I hadn't told him my work schedule, so he didn't know that I was about to clock out. So, after clocking out, I told one of my managers that I was on a dating site and some guy just showed up to my work, and I have no idea what he looks like, and that I was going to hang out in the back in the break room for a bit. Luckily, she didn't judge me and was like, oh, okay. So I waited about half an hour before I left. I didn't have a car at the time, and had to walk home and was afraid he would see me and try to pick me up in his car. Luckily, no one followed me, so I was in the clear. So, creepy guy, let's not meet. I don't think he ever messaged me or I ended up blocking him or something. It really creeps me out that some random person just decided that he would show up at my job and expect me to want to meet up with him. So, yeah... Now I just give a vague response as to where I work now. I don't work in the same town I live in, so it would be hard to pinpoint my exact location. This opened my eyes and made me more aware of the information I give out to strangers. So I had just gotten out of a pretty significant relationship with someone of four years, nearly engaged and moving in together, etc., when things fell apart. I took a good amount of time to be back on my own and get myself together again when my friends began encouraging me to get back out there. Needless to say, I really wasn't wanting anything at that point, nor looking for anything, but they insisted that I at least go out on a few casual dates for practice, just kind of get my skills back up for when I was ready. I think they were honestly just worried because I had become quite hermetic. So I matched with this girl on Tinder, who is home from college for the summer. She's a little out of the way for me, but was eager to meet, seemed really interested, 
and even willing to come to my area. I really wasn't all that interested to be truthful, but my friends again encouraged this, you know, practice, whatever that means. A date doesn't mean commitment, whatever. I want to be very clear though, that I was extremely honest and explicit with this girl that I was not looking for anything serious, or anything really at all. I was very forthcoming that I had gotten out of something serious and I was just kind of encouraged to explore. She persisted and still wanted to meet, so we agreed a casual lunch in a sports bar that week. I get there and she was already waiting for me. I was a bit put off by how much different she looked than her pictures, not trying to sound shallow or anything, but her pics from Tinder easily had to be at least five years old which I verified based on tattoos she had in person versus the ones she didn't have in pics, so I was a bit thrown off by that. I wasn't the least bit attracted to her, but I was there just to have new experiences anyway, right? Not a big deal. I felt so bad because the entire time she seemed so incredibly shy and awkward. I even noticed her hand shaking when she reached for her glass, which I found endearing, honestly so I did my best to get her talking and tried to help her feel more relaxed. I asked her questions and chatted about things I figured you chat about on dates, where she grew up, music she's into, school she goes to, major, etc. All to which I literally received one word answers. I went on like this for about an hour and she was just not working with me at all but I tried to keep room in my heart because it was clear she was feeling anxious and I understood that on a personal level. She then pulls out this book and says, I got this for you, and I responded very grateful, thanking her and inquiring what it was about, because hey, if someone wants to share a good read with me, I'm all for that. She looks at me very funny and says in a very sudden but odd tone, you're kidding me, right? I'm very confused and just kind of look at her like, what? And she says, this is your favorite book. You told me this was your favorite book. To which I said, no, I have never heard of this before. So we concluded that she ultimately got me confused with someone else she must have been chatting with, which I honestly found hilarious. She was embarrassed, but I made light of it and said I found it funny because I get it. That's Tinder culture, I guess. So we finished lunch, and I'm still receiving one-word answers despite our funny moment. I kind of become a bit suggestive that we should conclude our date by saying I had to get back to feed my animals and do some laundry, etc. But she became very adamant on spending more time and asked if we could do something else. I was genuinely trying to be a decent person, so I agreed, and we found a nearby park to walk. That's when things get weird. We sat on a park bench. Mind you, it's broad daylight. There are kids playing basketball nearby, folks jogging past. I start trying to make conversation yet again, but still get one word answers. Then, out of seemingly nowhere, without a warning whatsoever, she proceeds to just kiss me really aggressively, tongue and everything. I was honestly just so shocked I stood there frozen, not knowing what the hell to do. I had this timid, shy woman who's really not made much conversation with me at all, who was so nervous she was visibly shaking, just turn into a freaking bear and mauled my face in like 0.6 seconds. My head was spinning with confusion and anxiety, and I swear it felt like it lasted forever, and I just prayed for it to stop. I was so put off and honestly a bit afraid to do or say anything, like what do you even do in that situation? I was just hoping she'd pick up my very obvious body language, that I wasn't reciprocating anything at all. I was completely unprepared for a situation like this. Then, some really nasty guy walks by, gawking and catcalling, and literally begins propositioning us into a three-way, and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? I need to get out of here. I was a thousand different types of uncomfortable. I end up managing to ward him off after telling him very politely no, more than several times. All the while, she's just laughing, and I'm thinking, who even are you? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde over here, what the hell? So he leaves, and I'm insisting now that I need to leave and go home. She seems to ignore what I'm saying, and gets very close to my face again and says, 
Did you like that? Do you think I'm sexy? Do you want me? When I tell you I was so nervous. I was like, I really need to get home. And she was like, can I come? And I told her very firmly, no. She literally tried to persuade me to let her come back to my place with me. And I had to say no more than three times. So finally, I'm home. And frankly, just kind of shaken up. I hadn't really done the dating thing in quite a long time, but that felt very abnormal. She then texts me after she gets home and asks me out on a second date, and I was very kind, despite being made incredibly uncomfortable, and I told her that I thought she was a very cool chick and I had a nice time, which was a lie, but I did not feel anything there and reminded her I wasn't looking for anything. She then text bombed me a bunch of crazy stuff saying how she didn't understand and was so confused that she thought I was into her and that things went great. I did not respond to any of these because now she's continuing to cross my boundaries. I said what I needed to say and I thought I was being decent by at least being honest. So the texts continued and I figured they're going to eventually stop because it was a first date. How can someone be so upset over something not reciprocated on the first date? They did not stop. By the texts, you would have thought we had ended a two-year relationship. She then began calling, at which point I had to block her number. So, nightmare Tinder girl, please, for the love of everything, let's never, ever meet again. This happened back in February, when my boyfriend and I decided to try out an open relationship for a little while for various reasons. We live separately in one of the larger cities in the north of middle America, and there's a decent sized population of college students, like me, to keep the gay community fresh, so I was doing pretty well for myself. One night, I was bored scrolling through Grindr, looking for an easy hookup, when I got a message from a guy who was barely 800 feet away. He wasn't terrible looking, and I was a little desperate, so I agreed to go to his place. He lives quite literally down the street from me. I can see his building from my window. So I walked over, and he let me up into his apartment. We made small talk, and I mentioned where I lived. Hell, I even pointed out my window from one of the windows in the stairwell. From the first, I thought that something was off about the guy, not necessarily bad, just different. An odd twitch in his hands when he gripped the banister. The vacancy of his eyes when he smiled. I'm not so cliche as to say he felt evil or anything like that. But I wasn't exactly surprised that after we had got to his apartment, the first thing he did was to tell his very pretty and friendly cat to say hello. And the second thing he did was to walk over to the kitchen counter, grab a needle and shoot up. I hadn't even closed the door behind me. I stood there, staring, and he turned around, dropped the needle on the counter and went, Oh crap man, should have asked, you cool with that? I am not a good Christian boy. I have broken into a church while tripping on LSD. I had sex on a headstone back in high school, but I have my standards. So I shook my head mutely, pulled my hat back on, and opened the door to leave. The guy rushed over and put his hand on my shoulder. Yo, I'm sorry. You don't gotta go. We don't have to do anything. Do you want to watch Transformers 3 with me or something? Nope, I said bluntly, hustling away down the stairs. I bundled up my scarf against the early February chill and hurried back down the street to my apartment. He followed me downstairs barefoot in pajama pants and a t-shirt until I stepped out into the whipping winds. I turned back briefly to look after a moment, and he was still standing there in the doorway, watching me. I didn't have any premonitions of doom or weirdness. I grew up in Missouri, junkies barely register as odd to me by this point, so I went home and went to bed. Now, you might have guessed it, but I had never seen this dude around the neighborhood before. Truthfully, I hadn't seen most of my neighbors because my neighbors is an odd mixture of white-collar suburbia college housing and low income housing like my Paramus building, all on one street, so it didn't really register when I started seeing him more. 
I would leave for work in the afternoon and he'd be on the other avenue across from my building, strolling along. Or he'd cut across my building's parking lot like all the kids in the neighborhood did. A couple of times I saw him walking across the campus more. My apartment building is directly adjacent to my campus, but he'd always swerve to avoid me. Once or twice I'd notice him in the grocery store I work at as a barista, but it's the only one within walking distance and he mentioned he didn't have a car. This went on for the entire month of February. Eventually, I started noticing he'd always be walking down the street opposite my building when I left for work at my usual time, and he was only ever at the store when I was working. He'd never approach the coffee stand within the store where I work, but he'd look at me. A couple of times, I noticed him enter, look at me, pretend to shop, and leave without buying anything. I was starting to feel creeped out but he hadn't done anything yet to make me feel particularly unsafe. One day, late February, I worked an early shift. When I got off, I felt a little crazy from the lack of sleep, and I reached my place about 20 minutes before I usually leave for work, and on the corner of the sidewalk opposite me was the guy. He was checking his watch over and over and looking up. I did a bit of brilliant deductive analysis and followed his gaze up to my living room window. Then I looked back down at him. He looked right at me. There was a moment of tension as we both stared into each other's eyes. Like I said, this guy didn't give off evil or dark vibes. I've met people that do. No, what I saw in this guy's eyes, in his face, was much more human and much scarier. Desperation, loneliness, pain, and anger. He hurried after me, but I'm 6'3 and a former sprinter, whereas he was a 5'8 junkie wearing flip-flops on ice. I made it to the first set of doors to my apartment, scanned myself in through the second, and locked them behind me. He walked through the unlocked first set, tried to open the second, tried pushing the handicap button to open them, and then gave up. Look man, I'm sorry, he shouted, laying a hand on the glass of the door. Can we talk about it? I shook my head. Absolutely not. Leave me alone. Then I whirled on my heel and stomped over to the elevator. When I turned back, he had gone out into the snow. I didn't see him for a couple of weeks afterwards, which is nice because my boyfriend likes to walk down the street past the dude's apartment when he stays over and needs to go smoke. One night, my boyfriend was over at my place. He had just gone out to smoke before we went to bed and he mentioned that he wanted me to come with him next time he went out. Why? I asked, pulling him close to me while he shivered. It's dark and cold, and I get paranoid out there sometimes, he mumbled into my chest. There's this creepy dude that sometimes stands on the corner, across the way, and stares at the building. One time he asked me for a cig, and I told him I didn't have one, when I had one literally in my hand. He laughed, kissed my chin, and passed out. I laid there awake, troubled. When I was sure my boyfriend was deeply asleep, meaning after about five minutes had passed, I extracted myself and went to the window. It was a cold, clear night. I could see across the street, under the orange glow of the streetlight, was the guy. I couldn't make him out clearly, but when he saw me, he waved. I flipped him off and closed the blinds. I didn't feel like I should tell my boyfriend because he was either going to immediately go to the police, which I hate doing, or he'd try and defend me. And while I love him with my entire heart, I don't want to watch a fight between a junkie stalker and my underweight nicotine addicted boyfriend, so I kept it to myself and still haven't told him. But I did start accompanying him when he went out to smoke. The guy was usually outside. Sometimes he'd follow us for a bit before ducking away down a side street. Sometimes he'd watch from a distance. Sometimes he'd be up in his apartment. My boyfriend noticed. I kept my composure and nothing happened. One night, though, we went out so my boyfriend could smoke like normal. When we'd reached the end of the street and turned around, the stalker was behind us, about 50 feet back. I turned my head to check, and there he was. He waved at me again, and something told me I had to get back inside. Hey, babe, I said quietly to my boyfriend. Let's go back inside, yeah? I'm cold. 
Ah, oh, baby, he said, kissing me on the cheek. Okay, I'm almost done anyway. We walked back to the apartment building, and without turning, I knew that the stalker was behind us the entire time. I kept my hand intertwined with my boyfriend's, and kept up the casual conversation we had been having about how I hate geese. We got back to my apartment, and he got changed for bed while I grabbed some water. So I never lived in an apartment before, and I don't know if it's odd or not, but this building has a wired telephone in each unit that rings when someone wants to be let in. Ours never rings unless it's Uber Eats. So my boyfriend was surprised when it started ringing late at night, when neither of us had ordered anything. Probably some asshole playing a prank, I said, unhooking the phone from the wall and putting it in the kitchen cabinet. He accepted that without a struggle, and we laid down in bed. After he was soundly out, I got up, got dressed, grabbed a couple of things, and headed downstairs in my thick winter coat. Sure enough, my fanboy was out there in the parking lot. He waved at me and jogged over, smiling broadly. Hey man, what do you want? I said flatly. Look man, I feel like we ended things awkwardly last time, and I just wanted to talk to you, he said. So you talk to me? What? He started looking angrier, his brows furrowing. Nah man, I didn't talk to you. I just wanted to know when I could talk to you, but you always avoid me. Now you're walking around out there with that skinny little bitch boy trying to rub it in my face, and I don't appreciate that. Look man, he said, smiling again, stepping closer. You want to go talk about this back at my place? Ditch the white boy and come hang out with me tonight, please? I won't shoot up or nothing this time. He took another step closer to me. I saw in his right hand a dully gleaming piece of metal, a folded up switchblade. He smiled at me and I stepped back, shaking my head. His smile drained away into a deep scowl. Bitch, I'm done asking. You're gonna come over to my place now and finish what we started, he growled, unfolding the knife and pointing it at me. This dude was 5'8 tops and skinny. I'm 6'3, 200 pounds, and regularly lift weights. Also, I have a 12-inch kitchen knife which I drew from my coat pocket and leveled it at his throat. He looked at my knife and then back at his and smiled again. Bro, bro, I was just playing. We don't gotta, we can just talk right here, bro. I don't leave me and my boyfriend alone, I said very quietly, or I'll cut your face off and eat it. What the hell? I spent eight years in juvie for stabbing a kid in middle school. I lied. He backed up, putting the knife back in his pocket. I took a step closer, holding my knife level. He backed away quickly, almost falling on the ice, until he was full sprint back to his place, and I was chasing him down with my knife until he crossed the street and I stopped, slid the knife in my pocket, and watched him run back into his building. Then I went back up to my bedroom, told my boyfriend I had just had to go pee, and fell asleep. So, nameless horny junkie, let's not meet again, or I'll eat your face. So, a little description about me before I proceed with the story. I'm a gay man. Although to most people it's not really obvious because I have manly taste and I'm considerably fearless most of the time as I enjoy the thrill of getting creeped out. This happened in the Philippines in 2012. I was 18 at the time and I was living in a residential district by my university where most of the structures are apartments and dormitories for rent. I was living in an apartment with my sister. Unlike my sister, I don't usually come home on the weekends because I would rather drink the weekend away with my friends. One night, while I was on my way to a party, a guy messaged me on Grindr. He had no profile picture, and seeing that he is less than a mile away, I figured that he may be going to the same university as me and is being discreet about it. I don't remember the entire conversation, but this is pretty much how it went. Grinder guy, what's up sexy? Me, heading out to a party, you? Grinder guy. Really? Same. Where? 
I was aware of stranger danger back then, but I felt invincible because of my height and my lean but athletic body, and as I've mentioned, I don't scare easily. I told him the name of the club. He said, what a coincidence. I'll see you there. Sure, I said. Mind sending a pic? He said, I'll find you. I didn't reply and actually didn't care because my plan was just to enjoy the night and see where it goes. So I headed out around 10 p.m., still considered a safe hour in the city where I was staying, and walked a few blocks to the main street and then waited for my female friend who lived up the district on the other side of the main street to pick me up. We headed to the party and met up with my other friends there. We took our seats in a booth with couches and ordered for drinks. Our orders came and for a while, everything seemed normal and I honestly already forgot about the guy on Grinder. A waiter then headed to our direction bringing a glass of martini, handing it to me. He said, in our language, it's from the guy over there. I looked towards the direction he was pointing at, trying to adjust my vision to see through the laser lights and smoke. I saw this Nordic looking scruffy muscular guy in a hooded sweater who raised his glass as our eyes met, smiling before he took another sip. My friend started teasing me and kept telling me to go talk to him, but I didn't want to at first. After this, most of my friends were leaving their seats to dance. I couldn't do anything because I was thinking about the guy. It took me about 30 minutes to muster up the courage to finally approach him. I can remember the next events that happened vividly, not only because it was awkward, but I have never felt so threatened in my life. I sat next to him at the bar, and it seemed like he just paid for his drinks and was about to leave. Being a natural flirt, I knew I had to stop him and score one for the night, like get his number and get to know him more. Hey, I said. I realized that he may be a foreigner, which is typical, because there are a lot of foreigners living in this city. Thanks for the drink, I said out loud, trying to cut through the loud music. He just nodded. Are you the guy from Grinder? I then whispered into his ear. He just smiled. It was weird because it almost felt like he was trying to be seductive, but at the same time, hard to get, and at the same time it looked like he didn't have a clue. At that point, I was already giving up trying to start a conversation. I don't know what the point of getting me a drink was if he didn't want to talk. Maybe he didn't like me when he saw me up close. With that thought in my head, I decided it was time for me to go. Well, I'll see you around, I said, but before I could turn around, he grabbed my shoulder gently. Come with me, he said. It sounded like an order and an aggressive one if I might add, but at first I thought it was just because of his accent. Although I'm a big fan of Thor and I don't have a problem being anywhere alone with this guy, it still made me nervous because no stranger ever told me to come with them the way he just did. Uh, sorry, I'm with my friends, I said, but maybe we can hang out some other time. Let's go, he insisted. I wasn't freaking out at first because we were in a public place until he stood up from the stall. I may have flinched a little when he put his arm around me because although I was taller, he looked like he could crush me. Sorry, I really can't, I said. If this was some other time, I would, but I can't leave my friends. I could hear him grumbling under his breath, but as one of my friends approached, he just let go and walked out of the bar. I felt relieved, but at the same time disappointed because the guy was my type until he started ordering me to go with him. My friends kept asking me about him, but I said he didn't seem interested, not wanting to ruin the night for them. I was a little worried because I was thinking that he may have spiked the drink, but then I realized that if I was drugged, it would be taking its effect by then. We left the bar around 2.30 a.m. I hopped in my friend's car and we parted ways with my other friends. Usually, the streets would still be busy at this hour, but since it's the weekend, it was empty with only a few cars passing by. As we approached the bridge, my friend looked like she was on edge. You okay? I asked her in my language. That car's been following us, she said. I looked back and saw a black Toyota Vios. I told her not to worry about it because they might just be taking the same road on their way home. Well, whoever they are, 
They've been tailing us from the club, my friend said. I looked back once again, trying to see how many people there were inside. That's when I saw the same guy from the club, and I was immediately worried for my friend. Still thinking rationally, I told her he lived a few miles from me based on Grinder, so he might be on his way home, and stuff like that. But when I told her about what happened at the club, she started panicking. I told my friends to stop at the coffee shop on the way, and thank God this one is open for 24 hours. She didn't want to stop because she was really scared, and if we called the cops, they would probably do nothing until something actually happened. And since we had both drank at the time, it didn't really seem like an option. We were about to park, but the car with the Nordic-looking grinder guy just sped by. We decided that it was safe after this, and that we had the wrong assumption, so we headed directly to her house. On our way, the black Toyota was nowhere in sight. I told her I would be fine walking on my own to my apartment, although she insisted that she would wake up her brother to drop me to my apartment. I told her it won't be necessary to bother her brother because I can protect myself. She knows me, so she gave up and told me to be safe as I headed out. I have never felt threatened walking at this hour because I would usually come home from parties walking from the main street to my apartment, and since there was a police station a few blocks away, I didn't really mind. As I made it across the street from the main district where my friend lives, I saw the damn black Toyota. It was a pretty common car around here, so I tried to calm myself down, telling myself that it wasn't him, and I started speed walking. I heard the sound of car doors closing, and although my mind kept telling me to look back, I couldn't do it. I continued speed walking, that is until I heard a car starting, which made me look back. It was the black Toyota, and as the car started to move, there were three things going on in my mind. Run to the apartment, the closest option as of now, but then be efficient when putting the damn key in the keyhole to unlock the door and reveal where you live run to the coffee shop and hope that there's a security guard there who can help you, or run to the police station, the furthest option, and have him arrested. My feet felt like jelly and I didn't know what to do. The best option is the coffee shop, so I started running. I wanted to scream while I was running, but it felt like I was out of breath. The Toyota is now ahead of me and it parked up a few yards in front of me. This made me stop not turn around, but stop completely in my tracks. Fight or flight, I chose fight. I had nothing on me that I could really use, and the last fist fight I had been on was in fifth grade, but hell, I felt like I was ready for this. The Nordic looking stranger stepped out of the car, and it looked like he was holding a small knife. I stood my ground, although I knew I am doomed and will probably be murdered by Thor. As the Nordic-looking guy approached, the security guard from the university called my name. I turned around and there was a screeching halt as he tried to stop his bicycle. He knew me because there was one time I got to know him over coffee at an hour like this. He lives nearby and I was reminded that he would usually stroll around at this hour. Kuya, I said, feeling relieved. Kuya means older brother in our language sort of an informal sir, when you address someone older than you. Before I could even tell him what was happening, I heard the car speeding away. Kuya security guard and I then went to the coffee shop and I bought him a coffee. He said he was called on by his fellow guard, who can't leave his post, to scan the area because they apparently saw a strange guy lurking around the university. He even joked that maybe it was me, but I told him that I had just got back from the club and I also told him about the stranger and what happened, and if he saw him when he called me. He said he didn't, but he noticed the car speeding away. He also said that if I wanted to be escorted to my apartment next time, I could call him, so he gave me his number. I have never heard from the guy since then. I was even planning to set him up using Grinder so we could get his identification, but I couldn't find his profile anymore when I created a new one. So, Nordic-looking guy I met on Grinder, who may have followed me to the club and potentially my apartment. Let's not meet. And thanks for killing the natural flirt inside of me.
I decided to write about an incident that normally I hate to even talk about because it's honestly one of the most disturbing things that I have ever experienced. This all happened in January of 2019. For some background context, I'm a young gay man living in a very populated city, so weird things are bound to happen, especially when they're using the gay dating app Grinder. I'm sure you've all heard of it. When this started, I was living in a biggish city in northern Florida, but had plans to move the next week. My two friends had come down to celebrate my moving away and also one of their birthdays. We hung out in my city for a day and then drove to Miami together. It was a lot of fun for the most part, but this story begins on the last day of my vacationing there. We were at a brunch place preparing to say goodbye to the city and drive back home so I could pack my things and relocate to where I live now and I received a notification from Grinder saying that I had a new message. I opened it up and the message simply said, hi, or something of the sort. It was from a blank profile and it said it was sent using a feature called explore, meaning this person wasn't local to Miami but lived elsewhere. I replied, not minding the faceless profile, because a lot of men on the app are not open with their sexuality and might not want to take the risk of people in their actual life finding out about them. We make small talk, exchange names and such. He seems like a really nice person. He eventually sent me a few pictures of him and he was very attractive looking. He asked me for my number and I was so flustered by Miami and saying goodbye to our temporary friends that I just gave it to him without thinking about what could come of it. I regret this dearly. We texted over the next few days and things seemed pretty normal. We talked a lot, just casual chit chat, asking about our careers, goals, etc. Nothing strange. And then I noticed a notification from the cash app that I had received $100 from a random username that I didn't recognize. The memo was an eggplant emoji. Gross. I was so confused and started texting my friends, telling them how a random person had just accidentally sent me $100 and how he'd have to keep sending me more in order to ask me to return it because you can only communicate with someone on that app if it includes a payment. We got a laugh out of this and I decided to just return the money because I would be really upset if I was on the other end of the equation and I had just graciously donated that amount of money to a random person. Before I was able to do that though, my new grinder friend texted me and said, don't ask me for any more, that's all I can give you. I will block you if you ask me to send you more. I was so confused, I never asked this man for money I have no idea how he even got my cash app username. I know you can look people up using their phone numbers, but I hadn't even linked my new phone number to that app yet. I replied asking him how he got my information, but he wouldn't say anything about it. I guess I just dropped it because free money and I'm an idiot for that. Time goes on and things are getting a little weird between our texts. He begins asking me to send him pictures of my feet which in itself isn't weird, I don't like to kink shame, but something just felt very off about him at this point. It's as if I was talking to a new person. I tell him that he needs to calm down a bit and that this was getting uncomfortable for me, to which he agrees. Time goes by and eventually he insinuates that I should move back to Florida, to the city where he was located, so that he could, quote, take care of me. I firmly decline, to which he says, well then I will come to you. At this point, my alarm bells are going off and I'm thinking, I've got to put an end to this. I don't reply right away and he tells me he's always wanted to come to, insert my current city name. What? How the hell do you know where I live? I didn't give him any of my social media and even if I had, there's no way he could have known because I intentionally withheld any information online about me relocating as I was tired of everyone knowing my business. I have always had my location on Grinder set to off so he couldn't see where I was or even how many miles away I was from him. I told him that at this point he needs to leave me alone and that I didn't wish to talk to him. I didn't block him though 
because I was starting to get paranoid and wanted to have a record of the things he would continue to say in case things got super weird, which of course, it did. First, he told me he was sorry for lying and sent me a few pictures of what is actually him. I hate to sound like a jerk, but something was seriously off with the way this person looked. Almost every picture had a very big, disturbing, ecstatic smile and big wide eyes staring directly into the camera, very up close. He was probably in his 30s and looked like he didn't take care of himself very well. His skin was uneven and gray, and he had a short beard that looked like it hadn't been maintained at all, if that makes any sense. One of them looks like it might have been an accident because his face was blurry and he was angrily just staring into the camera with a hateful, evil expression on his face. He also sent me one of his mouth, but only his big smile pictured. Nothing else was in it. There were pictures of his apartment as well and it looked almost empty other than a small table with a photograph of unknown people in it. Also, a fire hydrant was there. It was all very weird. I didn't reply to these and that resulted in a string of angry texts from him telling me he wished he'd never met me and that he hates me. Throughout all of the weird, uncomfortable and filthy texts he sent me, there were a few exceptionally disturbing things. He sent me a link to his YouTube page, which I ended up viewing, and the videos were literally just him talking to himself and making jokes to himself. There were 10 plus of them, and I was the first viewer, although they had been up for months. If that wasn't weird enough, whenever he would pause in between sentences in these videos, I would hear faintly in the background what sounded like someone's muffled screaming, and every so often after hearing the screaming, I would hear him try to hold back a very high-pitched, sinister laugh that sounded nothing like him. I could tell from the sound quality that it was something this man was producing and not a bystander. I also don't think he has many friends. Most of these videos have since been deleted and I don't know why. I wrote poetry and at some point he was begging me to send him my poetry. He also sent me a link to his WordPress, which I also viewed, and the poems were somehow actually very well written, like extremely beautiful poems, but I realized that the things he was saying in them made absolutely no sense. I tried analyzing them any way I could because I was trying to figure out what was wrong with this guy and none of them made sense. He would randomly send me small amounts of money on the app, I guess in an attempt to get me to talk to him. Fast forward a little bit. The timeline was messy because this was just a constant stress on me and I was still receiving a message from him every 10 minutes that I wasn't replying to. These were weird. Here are what some of them said. Did you fucking block me, you little bitch? You wanna put me out of your life, little bitch? That's fine but it's an irreversible decision. When you push me out of your life, you don't get me back in. When you feel dumb about it later, and you will. I am the best thing that's ever happened to you in years. It is a privilege to know me. You want to clear a space out for someone more deserving because you're an uppity little bitch, not a problem. You're not getting rid of me. Stuff like that. I withheld some of the more vile and descriptive ones depicting what he would do to me sexually because I don't like to read them or think about them. He would also reply to his own texts almost instantly and apologize for what he said and told me, please don't go, and things like that. I finally broke down and told one of my best friends about this, who was also gay but very muscular and protective of me. I don't know, he just makes me feel safe somehow and I didn't know who else to tell he immediately got really mad and took my phone and called him. My best friend told him aggressively that he was my boyfriend, which makes no sense because I wouldn't be on Grinder if I had a boyfriend. Anyway, and that creepy Grinder guy needed to stop reaching out. Grinder guy is silent and then suddenly starts hysterically laughing and making the most inhumane, god awful noises I have ever heard speaking sentences that were English but with words that didn't make any sense together and just really creeped us out. 
the look on my friend's face still gives me chills. He never gets uncomfortable, but he was just staring at me with this blank expression, and it was in this moment that I realized that I should have just blocked this man as soon as I realized something was off. I didn't know what to do, I guess. After the call, he texts me a lot of horrible things and then says sorry, and this is a cycle for about 15 minutes until he sends me this. The private Facebook messages you may see were all written before our conversation via texts and phone tonight, so naturally disregard them and f you. I just blocked him. I have no idea what he was on about with the Facebook thing. I looked and couldn't find anything. This final exchange happened about a month and a half ago. I thought this was the end until about two weeks ago. I was exploring a nearby large city with the same best friend. There's a lot of big cities around me and I'm basically in the middle of them. We were walking out of a museum and I see someone that looked very familiar leaning against a cement wall to the left of the big stairs that was the entry to the museum. He was staring at us, but I couldn't make anything out of it. I ignored it and we hopped on the bus to take to a nearby restaurant for lunch. It wasn't until we got to the restaurant that I realized who this man was. It was him, the creepy grinder guy. I was sure of it. I have no idea how he knew where I was, but I knew he traveled over a thousand miles to come to the area I was living in. I didn't mention it to my friend because I'm seriously really creeped out, but I think I'm going to tell him when we hang out again because I don't want anything to happen to him either. Luckily, I'm moving again in a few weeks, this time very, very far away. I'm considering taking this all to the police but I don't know if I really have options. This has to be the weirdest, most uncomfortable experience of my life. Creepy grinder guy, let's never meet again. Seriously. Update. Holy crap. Obviously, this story has been on my mind today as I posted it only a few hours ago, and I decided to look through my Facebook message requests again and see if maybe I had missed something. I guess it got filtered because I didn't have him as a friend, but sure enough, there were a bunch of messages from him. It just says it's from Facebook user now, but I can tell it was him. He was calling me little baby boy over and over. He kept sending that message. He kept saying, where the fuck are you? He was also begging me to tell him a story, begging me not to quote, ditch him like that, saying that he will buy my love. A bunch of very weird and uncomfortable, deranged messages. I'm honestly in shock that I had just now found these. 